just to recap, so basically I've just put a tiny little bit of masking fluid on for the strings, um, just so that at the end, we've got a little bit of lightness there to delineate where the strings are. But everything else is just the drawing and the paper. So that's all we've got here at the moment. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my big mop brush. <clears throat> and as I said, the idea with this painting really is we wanna try and pull the, the detail out from the background. So the background is gonna be nice and abstract and loose. And the, the figures gonna sort of be painted on top of that. So I'm gonna to start to slosh some water all over. I might just leave the um, flower in his hat dry, just because I wanna keep that clean. We can go all over the face. I'm gonna not paint, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna put water into the violin. So the violin is gonna stay dry. So I'm kind of cutting around that a little bit. Now, obviously, if you didn't wanna do it this way, you could, if you had the patience and you wanted to, you could mask all this out so that you could just liberally slosh your water over everything. Um, but the problem with that, obviously, is then you've got the edges, the edges of the masking fluid to sort of um, sort out. And I couldn't be bothered, well, not that I couldn't be bothered, but I don't necessarily like that way of doing it. So I'm gonna try it this way today. So we're just bringing, and also not going over the hands, so the hands are staying dry, or as dry as I can keep them. So basically everything is very, very light, like the hand, the violin, the, um, uh, so the hands, the violin, and the flower in his hat are dry paper. Okay, so I'm just re-adding a bit more moisture back up here because this is gonna dry out. As I was fiddling, cutting in and round all of those shapes. So let's just re-wet those a bit. A bit more moisture in there. There's a little bit need to do in there as well. Gonna link that up. And then down the bottom here, we can just liberally slosh it on without really caring. There we go. So that's stage one, it's just to get the wetness into the paper, get rid of that hair. Now with a big brush, start to mix up some colors. I don't want too much tilt on this board, otherwise it's gonna spread very quickly. I want a slow spread and then tip it. So color wise, I'm gonna go with, um, let's start off with some cerulean blue. Did you say you did the wet the face as well? I've wet the face, yeah. The only things I've not wet are the hands, the violin, and the, and the flower. Everything else is wet. Okay, so just some cerulean blue. And I'm gonna let all these colors sort of mix on the painting. So I'm not really worried about where I place them as such. I just want a nice abstract kind of smattering of color. So a bit of blue, let's go with some, let's wash that brush out, change the color now. Let's go with some um, uh, like burnt sienna. So a nice orangey, quite a strong orangey brown. Fairly, fairly strong, because this is gonna dry lighter obviously, because we're, um, we're working on, on wet paper. So a nice bit of orangey brown, just let that mix and merge, perhaps a bit up here. A few little pings of the brush, wash the brush off. I feel like we need a little bit of purple because we're gonna have some yellow in this painting. So we need a touch of purple. So let's get some purple on the go. So you could just use, if you don't actually have a purple or a nice purple, you could just use um, some 
uh, alizarin crimson and um, some blue of, you know, like a print ultramarine or something of that nature. You could just use something like that. That would do the job. Let's swish a bit of that in there. A few swishy marks. Not too bothered what they are because they're obviously going to all blend and merge in a bit. So a bit of colour around the edge of the violin because that's going to be yellow. Let's bring a bit of that purple in there. <laughs> a few spots up here. But in and around near the face, bit of brown in that face. And obviously the hat's going to go very dark, so we haven't got to worry too, too much. Just trying to keep the shape of the nose roughly right. There we go. So a bit of colour there. Slosh some more at the top. Clean the brush again before I do a little bit of tipping. Um, I think a bit more cerulean because it's a bit of a heavier colour. So I want to push some of these out of the way as I tip it just to get a bit more um, movement in these. And a bit of blue in his face as well. I don't want it to be too, too warm. There we go. And that might leave that little bit of white just through there because that's quite nice because his hat's going to be very dark. So I'm going to clean off the edge now. As I start to tip this, I get, don't get too much of a run back. So I don't want this edge against the violin. So I'm going to tip that away and get that to just softly move. So hopefully you can see that I'm not out of shot. Just tipping the board directly away from me at the moment. So the paint's running up the painting. I might even get my spray bottle ready just to give it a little, little encouragement to just disappear out of the top of the picture. There we go. So a little bit like we did um, previously with the sunset. We're just letting that run away from us. I'm going to wipe up that excess because obviously when I tip it back again so those legs are towards me I don't want all this excess water to flow back into the painting so let's just mop up as much of that excess as possible and now see here we're getting a bit of an edge so I now need to tip it back the other way so that, that paint has a chance to flow down and away. Just clean up this edge. It's a bit tidier. And I'm just going to let that naturally flow down, not going to fiddle with that too much. Just having a look to see if there's anything I want to wipe out lightwise. So down here we've got a bit of light in his shirt. So I'm actually going to lift just with some tissue. Um, I'm just going to lift out a little bit of colour. So his arm is running through here. I'm just going to take a bit of that paint out. Just to really, and as, a, as I put the cerulean blue on first, the cerulean blue has actually stained the paper a little bit. So that's quite nice because it is a blue shirt anyway. So we'll lift out a bit there. There's a tiny bit in there, which I can lift out. Um, there's also quite a bit of light uh, in his trousers, so I'm not going to worry too much about the trousers, but I might just give an indication of where the legs are. Don't want too much. Perhaps a little bit of a wipe there, just to show he has got some legs. Okay, and then the final bit. 
might just add a little bit of light back into the background just as a bit of detail quite like some of those verticals so i'm going to bring a nice straight line or straightish mark there perhaps another one here just breaks up the background a little bit and then mop up this edge because it's starting to ball up again and that's it for the first wash perhaps actually another line that way yeah okay stop filling so i think for the next part what we need to do to establish all of our various colors within the picture i'm going to put the yellows um, or initial wash for the yellow into the um the violin yellow into the, the the flower and then maybe some very light pinks into his hands and then pretty much everything has got its initial um color value and then we can start to worry oh, sorry then we can start to um work up the darks a lot better so let's do that now first thing then is to take a slightly smaller brush I'm just dropping down to one that's got a bit more of a point on it. And I'm going to take my, I'm just using cadmium yellow here, just because it's a nice bright yellow. You could use lemon yellow, any yellow really. Probably wouldn't use um, transparent yellow because it's a bit more golden, unless you want a golden um, violin. So plenty of water in it because obviously we can always darken it up or make it more intense, but it's a lot harder to go less intense. So I'm doing this as a fairly light wash because this is just an establishment of these, um, these colors. We don't, it's not the final colors. So then i take another brush and I'm going to do this on dry paper, but I'm going to have a second brush that's damp, not wet. So I've just docked, I've just put the brush in the water and I'm just going to knock off the moisture onto the tissue. So it's now a, a damp brush and not a wet brush <clears throat> that I can then start to soften these edges with once I put this paint on. So let's do start with the yellows. And as I said, this is on dry. This is on dry paper. So I haven't wet the, I haven't wet the violin at all. Let's just go over that. Um, I'm not quite sure what you call that. The uh, the but oh the bow that's what you call it. Isn't so we go over that all the way around the shape, and think of it as a shape. That's the most important thing. Try to, and it's very hard, obviously, um, when you do anything artistic to actually almost try and ignore what it is and just think of it in terms of its most simple, simple shapes. We, we get bogged down into, oh, that's a that, or that's a that. When really we ought to be thinking more in terms of what is the shape or how does the shape go? Because that's actually what we draw. We don't draw, or we don't paint um, a hand or, a nose or a leg or an arm, we paint the shape of it. Anyway, so there we go. So there's a bit of yellow onto the um, onto the violin. We'll do the same again onto the onto the flower. So he's got a flower in his hat. Now the reason I kept the um, these dry um, at the very beginning when we laid in our background was because obviously where the paint, where, where the paper's wet, the paint will go, where the paper's not wet, the paint won't go. And so by leaving this white, when I bring the yellow on, the yellow is gonna be much more vibrant than if it had this sort of um, color underneath it, it wouldn't be as bright. So as we start to paint these later on against all the other colors, this should stay nice and bright and the other colors we can go darker with. So let's make a, um, a pinky color now for the hands. So I'm going to use the same um, cadmium yellow and into that I'm going to put a bit of alizarin crimson. So alizarin crimson is the dark red, if you're unsure. 
So it's the one that is a bit more like cherry, <clears throat> cherryish color. And just to knock that down a little bit so it's not so pink, a tiny, tiny bit of green in there, maybe a little bit of Viridian green, just to make it less, less um, pink. So let's just have a look, see what that's like. I think I might be a bit too, too dull now, isn't it? Just checking it on a piece of paper. Mm. Maybe a bit pinker. Because he's out in the cold. Don't want to give him too much of a suntan. Maybe a little bit more yellow. It's always a good idea to check your colours before you do start sloshing them onto your painting. Probably better, but too strong. So add more water. There we go. So a bit more water to that colour. So the back of his hand is very light. So again, I'm going to do this on dry. And I'm just going to paint the shape. So we come down the knuckles, down the little finger, under the palm, all the way through. So that's one hand. Let's just fill all that in. And then the other hand. This one's had a bit of creeper background into it, but never mind. <clears throat> so we've got a finger there. Got two fingers actually up and over the, the violin itself. There we go. So that's that. Let's just mop that up a bit. Okay. So that's all my basic colors now established. So let's give you a few moments just to do that. And then we'll move on to the um, starting to put a bit of color into the face and maybe even start to bring out um, some of the body and, and those kinds of things. <clears throat> do, do, do. So, let's clean my brush. Oops. I'm gonna clean off my palette while I'm waiting for you. So now in the um, in the face, so we've got two two ways that we can do this. One is we could, so if I was painting this in oils, then probably I would start off with the hair, and possibly even start to get some of this dark stuff in under the hat, and even his shoulder. But obviously with watercolor, if I start off with the hair, and I get it wrong, then there's no chance of me say cutting back with the reds in the ears or the the color in the face or bringing some lighter colors into the hat. Um, to correct that. So we're going to have to sort of pull out the um, the form rather than um, go from the, the, the darkest colours down. We need to sort of come from the middle colours up. So the way we're going to do that is um, I'm going to start to use some um, reddier colours in his face. Now what I, tr what I don't want to do is lose all of this nice soft colour that we've already got um, from the background. Well, that I've already got from the background. So I'm going to start off by looking for the very slightly darker colours than what I've already got on there. Okay, so for example, under the nose, in the mouth area, coming down to the chin, it's a bit darker. There is a crease there, we may or may not put that in. And then think of it in terms of like a box. This is the side of his face. Okay, this sort of section 
here is the side of his face. This side of his face is going away from us. It's turned towards the, um, uh, the violin. So this is getting a lot of light bouncing up into his face. That's why it's lighter in the front than it is on the back. Not massively, I grant you, but there is a tonal change. So this is darker, this is slightly lighter. So let's see if we can put some of that in. Right, so the way we're gonna go first is I'm going to wet the shape of his ear. So his ear is gonna be in here somewhere. And I'm not really worried about all the, um, all the folds and the, um, the various shapes inside the ear. I'm just thinking about the, the actual larger shape of the ear itself. I'm gonna take some alizarin crimson and a tiny bit of yellow in it, not much, just a very tiny little bit of yellow. And then we're gonna to start to drop that into this area that I've just wet. So this is the top of his hat, obviously. So we're coming down and then there's a bit of hair here. So I'm just gonna very slowly just tease that color out. So this color can come across and then up. So I'm gonna change the color slightly because as it comes into his face, it's turning from being very warm. I see it to going slightly cooler or um, slightly greeny browner than the um, color in his ear. So I'm just taking some brown and a bit of cerulean blue and mixing it into those pink colors that I just put in his ear. So it's brown and cerulean blue are the two colors that I've added, added to it, which will make it go more gray um, than the pink. So we'll start to bring some of these grayer colors into his face. So we go under the ear, it comes up the back of his ear. And then his hairline starts from about there somewhere. So then his neck carries on down. And this is his shirt on the left hand side of my brush mark. We come down, turn the corner and then we're into his chin, which kind of comes up towards the violin. And then this is a very dark patch. So let's paint all that together because we want to simplify this. So we're just gonna simplify the shape by painting the two shapes together. And then a bit more water. I'm gonna tease this out into his face a bit more. So then his cheek actually comes quite far out to about there. So under the hat line. And then you've got the cheekbone billowing out comes around and then down to his face. So I'm just gonna soften this off. I'm just using my damp brush to soften it off. And then that comes all the way down to his chin. <clears throat> okay, that's enough. Now let's put a bit of color in for his hair. So I'm gonna go with some brown. Just adding brown to that same mix. Nothing more intelligent than that. Need to leave it a little bit drier um, probably should have left a little gap there otherwise it's going to creep in but never mind. We'll just let that creep together. Now because the um, the hat sits over the top of all these colors I need to sort of bring them together a little bit. So let's take some purple and put that in with the brown. Remember these are still fairly fairly light colors at the moment. We can go a lot stronger and a lot more intense in this. So a little bit of cerulean in with that purple. So it's quite a dirty gray or a bit of gray really. And I'm just gonna bring that to the edge of the hat 
and start to bring that around the hat. So it has the opportunity to merge with these colours. What colour to... did you say, uh, Stuart? So it was just adding a bit of blue and a bit of brown to those colours I've already just used, really. Thank you. Okay, so cerulean blue. Let's drop that in there and then bring this all the way through the front of the hat. And then the hat starts to turn the corner and we'll just let it disappear. I use that same colour actually, <clears throat> just to give a little indication of where his eye is going to come. It's going to be in there somewhere. And there's a tiny little bit under the eye. We'll get in. Um, and then with that same grey, so it's still grey, um, setting a bit more yellow and red to it, just to warm it up a bit. And bring that into his nose and the nose fold. So the fold comes out and then around and then we fill in all of this as one shape. And get the underside of his nose in, all of his mouth, because it's all the same tone, and his chin. Okay, so that's the face part one done. While we're at it, let's put a bit of colour into the hat so that we establish the hat colour. So let's take that same grey, a bit more blue in it. sort of a warm, a warm bluey grey and a bit of water. Just start to block in the hat itself. Just to fill some of the shape in. Remembering we've got this band that goes around, around the edge. Coming under there, go around the flower, a few little abstracty marks, comes up the other side, underneath the hat there, water, then I can come around from the right hand side, around the brim. All the way around and then we can fill in the top. So again this is all on dry paper so we'll just fill that top in. Like so. Perhaps a little bit more cerulean just to add a bit of variation into the hat. Maybe there's a few, a few marks in it or something. Okay, so that's the hat in. And to um, start to paint some of the shape of his suit. And then I'm gonna drop, because I don't want it to be too literal. Um, I want it to be a bit more free flowing. We'll let some of these other colors show through as well. So just coming down his back. Gonna leave it's some just gaps. Water, then. This is just water, yep. Just okay. leaving some gaps to let the initial colors show through. Um, once we start to put these other colours on top. So that's his sleeve and then we come down and look, I'm not trying to leave any gaps between this wash. So wherever I can link things together, I'm trying to link shapes together. So we can link all of that in there because this arm is going to be dark as well. Coming all the way through. 
Okay, and then I might leave the rest of that dry and I might just spray that out as we come down. So let's take some um, cleaner colour now. I'm just going to use burnt sienna. Start off with burnt sienna on its own. I'm going to make it quite nice and bright. Flipping the board up. Now dropping the colour in from the top. Just letting it run. Going to get my pipette. If you don't have a pipette, you can just load up a brush with water. And I'm going to run some of that through it. Remember, the paper's already wet, so the paint should spread, hopefully. A bit more colour. A bit more burnt sienna. And again, I'm just dropping in at the top because I don't want to overpaint this. I want to let the paint kind of paint it. And again, we'll drop some more water in, let it run. So we need a bit more colour down the bottom here now. Let's reload up the top. Down here load up through the center here because it's pretty dark a bit more water now i'm going to do a color change to some blue now let's go to the darkish blue so let's go ultramarine so this is just neat ultramarine I'm putting on here now. So ultramarine blue. And again, we'll run some water through that. A bit more ultramarine just to start to pick out where his arm is. So his arm is actually coming down there somewhere. So his back goes through there. A bit more water. Run all this way. my mop brush just to clean that bottom up a bit and now I'm going to go slightly purpley a bit of purple into those blues just as another color change and I need to get a bit of dark in this front area just to start to pick out his shoulder a bit more this is just a um, bit of purple in with the blue. And there's lots of like creases and things, but I'm not going to worry about those. I just want to define roughly where the bottom of the arm is and where that meets this jacket. Fold. So, coming underneath the arm, fairly dark change again back to the brown so into these nice warm browns fairly strong with the color now Just to break that up a bit bit of brown in the front of his shoulder coming down and then his arm is fairly brown as well coming up to the back of his hand around the corner and then that meets up with the rest of his jacket 
which is coming down like so, down to the side of his leg and then away. Let's mop up some of these spots. And then take that same bluey purple color for the ultramarine and the purple together. And then I can actually darken up now this spot just under his chin. And then there's a dark spot just here. Because obviously this is indicating where it's coming down towards the jacket. It comes around his belly. And we'll make the forearm a bit darker than the forearm. So it comes under the hand, around the, the bow. There's a tiny little gap just in the finger there. Into the sleeve. So this is all sleeve. And then there's a dark bit and another dark bit. Okay, and then I'm just going to soften off now the bit that we've just put on near the violin. Just so it's not so sharp. Okay, and then I'm going to bring in some, um, what colour should we have down there for his trousers? Let's go with a, let's go with some brown, it's just some normal brown. I'm going to bring a bit of this down the bottom here. I'm just going to let that run away. In fact, I need to define the bottom of the jacket a bit better. That needs to be the blue purple. So the bottom of his jacket actually comes to about here. So let's make that a bit stronger. And there's some sort of tail piece to it. A bit more brown. Bring that up. Front of the leg, other leg, a few little squiggles, and then we'll run it away. So a bit of spray, just directing the spray downwards towards me, just to get that to bleed down. Okay. Some of those little holes that I've left, I'm not too keen on, so I'm actually going to run some water through those just to break them up. Ones in his arm will probably be okay, just this one's not great. Okay, and that'll do the body. I just need a little bit more dark. Uh, do we? Mm. Oh, we'll leave that for a minute. I was just thinking about this little area over here, but might need to do something with that. <clears throat> Maybe we'll just spray that out. All out cells, give it a spray. <laughs> there we go. That'll do it. What we do now is just start to add some neat. So this is just um, cadmium yellow out of the tube. And I'm just adding it neat onto the um, onto the flower just to brighten up um, the yellows within this shape. Still leaving some of the lighter yellow show through, but just bringing on some of this neat yellow. Might even add a bit of that just to start to shape up my violin. And again, if you've already gone quite dark in your violin, you might not need to do this. Just that mine's quite light at the moment. So I'm just going to add a bit more detail just to shape it up a bit. 
get it to stand out a bit more. Uh, a bit more yellow kind of down here. Don't need to do the whole line, let's just do part of it. And then we've got a bit of yellow coming up to the knuckle, around the knuckle. So by leaving it as a broken line, it makes it a bit more interesting. Don't need to go around the whole, the whole thing. A bit more yellow here on the end. Okay, let's clean the brush off. And some more blue notes into his shirt. So just taking some neat cerulean. Oops. So just dipping into some cerulean blue. And then start to detail up a little bit around the neck. So this is his shirt that kind of comes down here. Kind of kicks out a little bit. Comes down towards the, the violin itself. Perhaps a little bit bluer there. We've got some blue in the hat. So I'm just going to start to bring that in. Leaving a little bit broken colour, not too, too sharp. Bit of blue down underneath this arm. Break up this shape a bit. Clean that brush off. Okay, now I need some red. So I'm just going to dip into some nice medium red. A nice bright red. So again, straight from the tube. I have some red in his band. Coming round. So it comes round the front. And this is very dry, by the way. So there's no water on the on the paper. There's very little moisture in the brush. It's using the paint fairly fairly dryly dryly even if that's a word um i'm gonna have a little bit of that red to pick out some notes within the ear perhaps a bit down at the bottom here just to give the ear a bit of detail we'll have a bit on the edge of the nose It's a bit in near the eye, under the nose. Down at the mouth, just a tiny bit, don't want too much down there. And then coming down to the hands, so these can be a lot warmer in places. So a little bit of red because generally where the surfaces are quite bent and squeezed, they get quite, quite red. So we'll probably need to temper that a little bit. A little bit of red in there. Tiny little shape in that finger. Okay, clean the brush off.
So I'm going to make now a sort of a warm pinky orange. Kind of colour. And alongside that, I'll make a, a cooler greeny, so cerulean blue and a bit of yellow to give me sort of a green kind of colour. So I've got a warm pinky orange and a cooler bluey green, two colours that I can work together. Then I'm going to start off with a bit of that peachy colour and bring a bit of that into the hands, move it around a bit, bring a bit of the green in at the same time so it's not all just pink, a bit of the red so just manipulating the red and the, um, the green together. <clears throat> In fact, the whole of this side of the finger is quite, quite bright. Coming up to the edge of the hand there, a bit warmer. It's a tiny, tiny little bit in there. Keep that soft, otherwise it will won't read right. Oops, a little bit on the knuckle, that's a bit too big. So tissue. Just to block that off a little bit, it's a bit strong. And then the other hand, we've got some of that warm under the knuckles, just to delineate where the edge of the knuckles are. And it comes down the back of the hand. Go slightly purple. Just a bit more purple in there. And then a bit green. Just to start to get the twist in the hand as it comes down and into the wrist. Work that in a bit. Clean that brush off. So we want a softish transition here. So just adding a bit of water just to soften that those colours in. Touch more purple. Put a little bit of purple in this finger. just to show that it's in a slightly different orientation than the other one. This can be more purple. That's enough. A little bit of green. Not too much. Okay, that'll do that. In the face, we we'll have a little bit more green in parts of the face. So, a touch greener. Just under the hat. A bit more yellowy, peachy orange. So, the peachy colour that we're just using the hands. Bring a bit more of that in. So let's work that back into the shadow. So what I'm trying to create here is a sort of a brighter band where if you can imagine the sort of the light bouncing back off of the, the violin is casting a bit of a colorful area in his cheek. It's got a bit more, slightly more yellow, just slightly, just to amp it up a little bit more. 
it's right on that edge. And perhaps a little bit more on the tip of the nose. The, just the eye fold over the eye. Okay, that's probably enough of that. And okay, back of the hand needs a bit more color. Okay, a bit more purple. Very, very light purple, so lots and lots of water in it. Just to show that this is a different plane to the um, to the fingers Let's put that in this bit of the palm a tiny bit of shadow underneath this bone there as it goes away and then into the wrist disappears Let's just soften that off <clears throat> then we've got a bit of detail now to put into the violin. So we need some darks. For that I'm going to use um, purple and um, let's keep it quite purpley because the violin itself is yellow and obviously purple being the complementary of yellow but I want it to be pretty dark so I've just mixed up some Elysrian and ultramarine so this now can come in as some nice dark shapes against against his face so these are like the um, I don't know what they are, the, the kind of the bits on the violin itself that the strings kind of attach to. I'm not sure the technical term, but I'm sure there is one. Um, so I'll come down and remember this is where I've put my masking fluid, so I'm actually going to paint all the way over the top of that. Might go a bit bluer actually on the top side of that straight. So just put some cerulean blue in that same that same um, brush stroke coming down to the hand. Oops, gone over the line a bit too much there. Okay, and then we've got these um, very dark. Um, twisty things at the end that tension the strings. Let's put those in. Keys. Sorry? Keys? Is that what yeah. they're called? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> the keys then, we'll put those in. Um, let's kind of touch darker again. So a little bit of um, Payne's grey or um, you can even use some black if you wanted to. Just to start to get the shapes in. So a little bit on that side. A little bit on that side. We've got some nice darks actually under this finger so I'm just going to drop a bit of dark in there just to darken that up and then while I'm at it I'm just going to bring a few drawing marks just with my rigger just to shape up some of these bits so there's a few marks there Perhaps a little indication of where the bottom of his arm is. Not the whole arm, so just parts of it. Otherwise it all gets a bit too um, overly drawn. I want to leave a bit to the imagination. 
So a few more dark marks. So just using black now. Just to give me these very, very dark indications. So that's his arm. And then we've got some nice darker bits under there. Coming round his front edge. And there's sort of a, a slice in his jacket. So we'll come around, give him a back. Perhaps he's got a little bit of a hunch there. Now, the hat needs darkening a bit his hair. So again, just using a bit of the black, Oops. just going to come underneath the the, um, the, hat, the hat line, fill it in a bit, perhaps a bit of that over here. This he's not had a haircut for a while, so his hair is a bit long. I'm sure all of us can relate to that. <laughs> um, I know I can. So, again, I should block that off a little bit, a bit heavy. Uh, okay, I'm reluctant to go of any darker in the hat. I don't think I want to go too dark in the hat. Um, I think possibly just a few, a few marks in the sleeve. So again, some brown and black together. And I'm just going to do this very loosely. I'm not really looking for um, the actual folds. I just want to give an indication of some folds. So just some squiggly lines will do the job. And then perhaps there's a pocket or something. Give him a pocket here just to add a bit of character. Few little buttons or something on that arm. A little bit there, tiny bit there, and then we just need to put a bit of shadow, not shadow, but a little bit of definition underneath the um, the violin itself, just to give it some depth. Otherwise, it's a bit too bland. I'm taking my uh, cadmium yellow and put a bit of brown in that and I'm just going to fill in the shape that gives us the depth of the um, the violin so this is kind of like the um, the bit you need if you're drawing an archway or if you were um, trying to give something some width. So a little bit in there, a little bit down there. Just wash that in. Don't like that one colour, so let's just change that slightly. I'm going to take some blue. Just drop a bit of blue in there as well. Just so it's a bit more varied in colour. Okay, and then a bit of blue just on this edge. Oh, and I'm painting his bow yet, crikey. How very remiss of me, put his bow in. So just taking my purpley colors, the cerulean, a little bit of cerulean in there, just to make a dark, bluey gray color. Now, straight edge. I'm going to use a bit of card, and I can find a piece, a bit of scrap, just a piece of scrap watercolour paper will do. Here's one we did previously, so I'm just going to paint and use that as an edge. So I'm going to lay that on my bow, like so. So the edge of the bow is just on the right hand side of this piece of the um, 
the paper, holding the brush nice and tightly, I'm just going to start to cut this bow shape in. So obviously if I go too far to the left, then it will go onto the paper, which is what I want. So it comes all the way down like so. Now, if I gently peel that off, I should have a straightish left hand side. The right hand side's not so great, but the left hand side's all right. Let's clean that up. There we go. It doesn't need to be so dark in the middle, so I'm just going to block that off a bit. And I think I'll give it a tiny bit of the same shadow colour I used under here, just in the bow itself, just to show that there is, I don't know, some strings that have something that he's actually rubbing. A bit there and a bit down here. I'm not going to do the whole, fill it in totally, leave a little bit of gap. Down there, a bit more dark, just to finish off this shape. A bit more shadow just under that hand. Just to link the two together. A bit more blue on the underside of the hand in there. Just soften that in. Okay, and then just finally, put a bit of white, just a few little white indications. In fact, I'm just gonna dry it off quickly. Just a few little white indications. So perhaps just a tiny bit at the top of there. A few little flicks, a bit of brightness just in the shirt there. Um, perhaps he's got a, I don't know, a bit of a whitish stripe on his jacket. A little bit of a color in his belly just to tidy that up. Uh, maybe just a tiny bit here, a little bit on his knuckles, because they tend to be quite light. And then perhaps just a teeny bit in there, and a tiniest bit just in round where the face is, just to make the face stand out a bit more. And that's it. There we go.